and welcome to Business Eye. It's Friday. Outside, they are assembling Santa's Grotto, which gets me really excited. I love Christmas. Me too. I really do. I hate Halloween, but I love <laughs> Christmas. It's the joy, the happiness of everyone smiling and all those Christmas bonuses. Do people still get Christmas bonuses, Simon? Do they? I think they do. Do they? I, they I don't do. know. I don't know. I must inquire will I give myself a Christmas <laughs> bonus this give year. Give me one. Give, give me you one. one as well. <laughs> we'll all one. Yes, folks, it's Friday and it's uh, the coming at the mid November. I was going to say the end of November, yeah. but I'm, I'm all over the place today because we had to run up here. Today uh, we have two guests. Uh, our first guest is Mark, is Mark Flood from Brand Finance. No, Renata's Capital. Oh, Renata's Capital. Sorry, my, my apologies on that. See, I didn't do my homework on that. And the second person that we have in coming in then is Francis Valour, who will be coming in on the break. Mark, sorry for messing up your company there, <laughs> but it's allowed. You were running late as well and running in the door. How are you? Great. Yeah, looking forward to Christmas as well. Yes, it is. It's probably too early to sound. I watched a couple of videos last night on Christmas as well. But Simon, how was your week? What's happening in your life? Uh, I had a big cold this week. I felt sorry oh, for myself. Was, I had yeah. the man flu Monday, Tuesday. Uh, then I recovered and I've just been really busy fielding new pieces of work coming in, proposals and stuff. So it's great. It's great. But I, I love Christmas too. I love that kind of naive childlike kind of feeling i get i love halloween too i love the whole october november december thing yeah i do i i like taking the week off we're quite blessed here because a lot of my uh, clients and friends in the states they only really get off one day yeah. in it where oh, here no. here it is we i like it's to take month. off the week take off the week and i watch all the movies that i haven't watched for the whole year in yeah, that week yeah, then yeah. i used to drink but i don't i don't know yeah. what i'm going to it's going to be my first christmas without drinking yeah. i don't know what i'm going to do i've been watching lots of movies they watch lots of movies <laughs> so tell us what's going on today so so mark so um renata's capital so we we met uh, a few months ago and uh uh, what, what I was struck with was, uh, you know, you're, I'm interested in your background, but what I'm really struck with is the, the way you've kind of almost disruptively changed the whole deal M&A market in, in, in Ireland. From what, you know, your the newsletter that goes on, out on Sundays, the research that goes into that is quite astonishing. And I've met a number of people who say, if you're going to read nothing else, read Mark's newsletter or an artist capital new newsletter on a Sunday. So maybe tell us about your background. It is a good read, I have it's to a, say. It's a I, very good I read. I do get it. So I love that <laughs> you know your stuff and you're not afraid to push the ticket in this space. So tell us a little bit about that. Probably, thanks Simon and Joe, to, to give context uh, just to who we are first and then to, to and why we, why we do the newsletter. Um, we we set up five years ago. Um, we saw we saw a gap kind of between private investors and private equity. In a sense, we call ourselves halfway between both. We might um, bark like a private equity house, but really we're a syndicate of entrepreneurs uh, wanting to fund SMEs and and bring them from good to great and beyond. Hopefully, yeah. that's uh, so. We uh, we gathered a, a pool of. 11 million, which is small in fund terms, big in absolute terms, clearly. And um, we, we invested in, in three companies. Um, they've been they've been uh, great fun and heretofore successful uh, with great partners. And on the back of that, we raised 35 million again with the same model. We're not institutionally backed by, by state or pension funds. We're backed by entrepreneurs who want to help other entrepreneurs. And hopefully the, the outcome of that um, yeah. hopefully will be a return. But that's... Yeah. Is it an independent board that sit down as well that listen to investors? Um, on, or is it the same group of people that set up the, the FTC set up the fund? And yeah, you've got a layer. So you've got the, the pool of money, which we, we say from... Um, our source of capital is self-made and sound entrepreneurs. That's the uh, self-made and sound is 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 the criteria for for our investors, and they they have the money. Uh, we're the day-to-day -day link between their money and the investee companies, and we've got a layer between us and the investors, which sit as an investment committee to say, to say, do we invest or not invest? Invest, yeah. yeah. It, 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 do they have to be at a certain criteria for you to even get them to apply for application? Because we know you could get bombarded with elevator pitches and application forms. Do yeah, we, we have. We, we've set our stall out quite clearly. We're not. So if you think of the landscape of possible investments when you have a pool of money, we're uh, we're not 
property we're not pre-revenue or pre-profit venture capital so we've set our stall out with four criteria which is businesses making a million plus profit cash EBITDA interchangeable yeah. terms yeah. that's the first sustainable sustainable profit and the second is a plan or prospects to to double over a 5-10 year horizon a great team which is the most important yeah. and a sensible deal for all around the table so that can be in, in many ways so that confines us probably to you know if there's 250,000 SMEs in Ireland there's probably 90% of them are too too early or too small for our you know there's people we'd swap places with them in the morning with, with businesses throwing them out 300 grand a year but it just doesn't mean it yeah, just doesn't no, align to our strategy it doesn't mean that they're brilliant businesses and they're doing better than us mm-hmm. I think there's a, there's a lot of risk in you know throwing out a 300,000 to those sort of businesses as well mm-hmm. it's when you get to that level when a company is well established they are making over a million a year you know, a lot of that could be going out on wages, yeah. realistically, and they need that extra capital just to get them to up to the to the, that next level. Yeah, well, I think it's evolution. It, it's 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 and it's horses for courses. It's just not ours. I think the what, what I'd advise a lot of people at the earlier stage. There's um, there there are some great earlier venture backed funds, but. And some people get caught sometimes between friends and family and then getting institutional backing. But I think there's a, for them, and it's not us in Renatus, but for them, I think the big thing they should be doing is getting value added money. So saying if somebody has a product and they want to go international, find someone who has brought a product international and you'd be amazed at the people who have amazing accomplishments and they're just saying I want to do something people want to mentor people with money and success that have maybe sold out a business or retired the amount of people that uh, so that's that's where and that's the key to our model which we'll come to on, on the other is is getting value added money and that's where at the earlier stage of the ecosystem it's that's that's where that's where you should be where people should be is, is is going in between at the earlier stage maybe in between the friends and family and getting a venture back fund is getting that value added money you mentioned the team you and you mm-hmm. I think you said the most most importantly I, I've just been on a phone call with an organization in the UK and great organization but they now need to get a team to, they have an investor ready but the investor said you need a business plan and a really strong team, and it's amazing they haven't already done that. So, mm. so they're fortunate they've got somebody champing at the bit to give them money. But what what what's the key, what's the key aspect of a good team, and what what do you look for in a good team? It's we've we've spoken we've spoken at depth. Our last, our last two meetings, Simon, where we're, we're um, you know setting out on this journey, you kind of you know and and probably post uni where you've read about all the heroes investors hero entrepreneurs hero everything and my hierarchy of what makes a business would have been probably strat- strategy or finance one two and brand people now I'd flip that hierarchy I'd say I'd say probably one people two brand three strategy and the numbers are the outcome that's, that's the sense. you know that's um and it's it's an inexact it's a it's an absolute inexact science uh you know we brought the kids to uh to tato park um last week and uh, if somebody came if ray coyle came with that business plan to say i'm going to build a amusement center disney-esque out in the middle of nowhere in meath i would say get out of get out of the room (laughs) so like it's but he had the wherewithal to do it and i think i think it's a mixture i i think the big thing is um it, it speaks back to the brand values as well it's um i think um most of the time people have the accomplishment it's the absolute tenacity that's the yeah. bit for us and the people that if they've proven it and it helps obviously if they've done it before but if you can see that uh, I think the um, in our world of SME I think the uh, the absolute I think it's yeah, I, th- I think it's it's speed I think there's two elements you mm-hmm. talk about you know it's people and strategy and everything as well but I think two main elements elements is speed on delivery like someone could have a great idea and it could be great but 
they need to have that speed to get it to market because execute. it can execute it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 the clarity of what they're doing, the execution of it, and then along the way grabbing people and putting them in the life raft if you want to 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 be rescued. Uh, uh, yeah, and the team, like you just need to spread uh, competencies, and uh, we're working quite a lot more on the psychometrics to a level, but the analysis of a team, like you need a, you know, if it's a Gaelic team, you need your your goalkeeper, your full back, your midfielder, and your forwards. So you need the blend. The blend of the people is is important. The integrity, the blend, mm. and there's no if there was a. If if there was a formula, or I don't think artificial intelligence has got there yet, you know, it doesn't have an emotion. Mm. It's like a it's like a multifaceted Rubik's cube, isn't it? Mm. You, you could have the perfect CFO, the perfect finance person, legal person, marketing person, mm. but if they don't work well together, mm. if they don't work well together today, but they do yesterday. You know, if things things change every day, you know, so it's multifaceted and it's constantly moving, isn't it? With a lot, with a lot of organisations as well, when they set up and they have that great idea, you know, the the one thing that I've always said to clients is when money is thrown on the table that's when things change mm. and a lot of people who are in the industry and you know they come to you for a million the, the, things can change within the organization as well and you know there's a lot of ego wrestling in as well so do you when you're looking you say the psychometrics which is very important of so you're looking at the psychometrics of the individuals in the business but also for them they should be looking really looking at who is their customer really and truly and a lot of people don't look who their customer is on it and that's you, does it do you scratch your head sometimes and kind of go god these guys are great but they still need too much work for us to invest uh, there can be, well, I suppose, back in our in our case, we've a team on the other side of the table who have delivered a business that's making over a million. So they've proved they've they've already proven themselves yeah, yeah. in a sense. Mm-hmm. So there's less kind of there's less uh, or they're hiding it. Yeah, well, there there there, there, there there's less uh, question over their ability to to deliver. It's yeah. then can they deliver to the next level? Like that's the and then that comes to hunger and tenacity and and what what are the hot spots industries that user looking at at the moment well if you take our like the three businesses we have one's in food retail one's in pilot training and the other is kind of light manufacturing um, distribution um, so we, we, we've quite a broad spread I think in Ireland you can't uh, if you kind of confine yourself by mm. metrics you can't confine yourself by sector but I think the um, and there's some other sectors like we'd be um, um, ourselves we wouldn't you know, on trend and to our own values and to our investors' values. Like, I don't think, you know, we'd be slow to get into single-use plastics or anything like that now. So it's it's getting into the, getting into uh, proper sectors that are going the right direction. What, what about your own judgment? Have you ever surprised yourself with your own judgment calls, positively and negatively, in terms of who you've backed and the sort of people and the sort of business? Have you surprised, looking back, have you thought, I could have done that better? Wow, that was an amazing backing. Well, thankfully, all of our three, all of our three investments, they've been they've been great. But yeah, there has been some that you kind of um, we we let go, and it probably came back to um, in our earlier days. We kind of thought that we could analyze analyze all these ourselves, but now we really, when we're looking at an investment in a sector, we don't know. We we we've quite a broad network ourselves, and through our investor base, we bring someone who's an expert in that. So, in the form of Bujum or Mexican restaurants, we brought a Dan Thompson, who was head of retail in Paddy Power. Mm. And Paddy Power was about preserving brand and scaling retail, and he's been just brilliant on that. And yeah. in Simtech, we brought Eugene O'Reilly and his his colleagues, and Eugene was CEO of a of a of a airline in Turkey. And uh, so we're very much about bringing, knowing what we don't know, mm. <laughs> and more so, yeah. and bringing a, 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 an industry guru along with us on the journey. In terms of the the, the newsletter you sent out, when we met, you 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 said that. Um, you just went for it and you almost like broke market expectations and you just researched like like mad and then just went for it yeah we we uh we said how it was the orig- origins where we had a lot of expat entrepreneurial 
investors abroad. And our first newsletter five years ago went to 20 people on a BCC list. And now we've 30,000 people on a database. Mm-hmm. But it was, uh, but we've, it's a 10 hour, 10 hour shift every week. All our team get involved, but we love it, you know, because it's all, it's researching deals that have happened. It's mm-hmm. researching it's very company performance and it's researching people. So it's, it's, uh, mm-hmm. it's not like work to us, you know, so it's, mm-hmm. and I suppose consequently that passion flows through and, and you people can see like it, reading yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's, I do like it with a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I think now that we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back after this, folks. You're listening to Joe Dalton on Dublin South FM, community radio with a global audience. Welcome back. Mark, um, we were talking then a, a bit before the break about, uh, you know, the sort of companies you invest in. But in terms of your company, what, what, what's the value add that you bring to your investments? So we've, I guess... Any any partner, if it's you know, if we're buying out shares, sometimes we might buy fifty percent of a company, and we're really getting into bed with that partner, or we're, we've an existing management team who are doing a management buyout, or we've somebody from the outside buying in. So it is a marriage, and everyone is asking, what value add do you bring? So I suppose our our guiding pieces is to um, is to be hands-on when needed and hands-off when not because they don't want, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, they're the jockey, the business is the horse, and you got to leg them up and leave them at it, but help yeah. them if you can. It's a subtle balance, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's, it's very subtle. And we're, we're learning all the time, but we try to get feedback every time, and we have we've, we've framework around that where three months into an investment, six months, 12 months, we get feedback and, and try and get that balance to be hands-on and value-add where possible, but not get in the way. Is your business learning through to what extent is it learning through the feedback you're getting from your invest investee companies? Are you oh, massively! Like we, we've awesome. going into our fourth investment soon is we're 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 different different people than we were going into our first. And uh, so the value add we, we we pitch it as five pillars. There's ourselves who are the kind of lead directors. There's mm. um, myself and and myself. Brendan Trainer, Greg Hogan, and and Philip Gardner. We're the senior people in the organization and then we've got brilliant support around with our, our analysts we would not get a job in Renatus they're way smarter than, than we ever were <laughs> yeah. so they're like a young McKinsey so there's our so we've run yeah. businesses uh, so that's us there's the young McKinsey there's our, our investors who I've mentioned who are all deep in SME the, the fourth layer is co-investors who can add value and then the fifth layer is bringing in functional experts because the joy that we love of SMEs going from good to great is that you can't just throw endless consultants or no. 300 yeah. grand heads of functions so we're diagnosing well you might need that in uh, you might need that in marketing you might need that in operations you might need that in HR and we've got a band we've done an awful lot of work to get you know we've met endless amounts of HR directors so we can match the right one to bring that strategic bring that strategic influence what what is your passion behind it to drive you in the business we just absolutely love the dynamics of SMEs it's it's as someone said before you know that it's I, I think the test to see if someone is curious and loves it you go into a bar you say well there's 50 seats here and half of them are full and half of them are drinking and half of them are eating and you're trying to the dynamics behind the business just are absolutely intrigued and then that's the first part is just the drivers of a business and the second part is the ability then to see that business realize its potential that's that's what really 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 drives us. So you can see, like we've taken, not us, us in conjunction with the management team and the existing business, like Bougem was a, we call a top 10% Irish company, it's now a top 1% Irish company. Simtech was a top 10% Irish company, it's soon to be a top 1% with, uh, with, a, with a big contract we won. And it's seeing that, it's seeing, seeing the realisation of potential, which is such a confluence of the business, the strategy, the people, the brand, everything. What's your biggest frustrations that you you would have not moving fast enough, or is it? Yeah, not not moving fast enough, and and maybe people not uh, not res- not kind of respecting equity or 
kind of we've seen businesses that have said no we don't need equity we don't need we don't we're not going to sell now we're going to give it to the next generation and the next generation don't look happy they're not passionate they're not maximizing the potential of the business and that's so it's kind of it's it's when you see lose lose outcomes we've lost because we haven't got an opportunity to invest but then someone else has lost because the business isn't fully realizing its potential what what was the driving force behind you setting this up? Like, what were you doing beforehand, and and when did this sort of click in? And says this is a great idea. A typical um, CV of a child, teenager of a buying, selling everything, and uh, from a family business, so always driven by business and um, just the rawness of SMEs. I, I, I sense you enjoy. Oh, it's the it's the, the trader and, and SMEs and the entrepreneurs like to. Any entrepreneur who goes day one with nothing and with a blank canvas and ends up with a business making a million, the respect for those people because they know business. They're not just good at HR, not just good at brand, not just good at finance. They could be ahead of any function, and they Mm. like they're like it's 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 as as someone said, go and get a new hobby. But it's not like it's it's, a hobby. You could be rubbish at a hobby. It's it's uh, uh, like the the my heroes are Irish entrepreneurs. Like and each one of them, each one of them has a different facet. But but that's ironic, you know the. Heads of a lot of these multinationals around the world haven't been through that cut. And, I mean, Joe and I have run, mm. uh, owned our own small businesses, entrepreneurial mm. businesses, products and services and stuff. And it, every day is just on the edge. Whereas a lot of those senior executives have just been through, you know, business schools. They haven't lived and breathed that stuff. No. Until you go to bed at night wondering how you're going to pay the wages in the morning. If you haven't Different done universe. that, you haven't you haven't yeah, lived business. It, it's it's, yeah. it's a, like a, the joke that I say. I, you know, I, I sleep like a baby. I wake up every three hours. <laughs> <laughs> You know? But that's yeah. A lot of people are are, are you know and, and great you know amazing people and uh, but they've they've lived with a cotton wool existence yeah. of sorts. Do you, know? do you know the one thing which really dawned on me was a couple of years ago was oh my god I'm now paying these people's wages and these people are using their wages to get mortgages and it's sort of that sort of thing dawned mm-hmm. on me went oh my god I'm responsible for these people and they're paying and they're getting their mortgages and they're raising their family on my decisions that was that was something yeah. that really sort of kind of went oh I, I did yeah I'm a, I'm a grown up now <laughs> Yeah. Mike, yeah. Mike, tell us about the, the re, was it the Real Deal conference you held down at Goffs in Kildare recently? Well, tell us a little bit about that and what the purpose of it and what came out of that conference. I guess it speaks to uh, it speaks to what we've just been talking about with entrepreneurs. We we thought there was um, there, there are many conferences, but our exact sweet spot of of SMEs. We said we, we'd love to get. Uh, a lot of heroes on the stage giving their story and we'd love to get a lot of SMEs listening to that story and that was the guiding thesis Stuart Fitzgerald from Fitzgerald Power um, kind of brought that same idea to us and we we were brainstorming we said there's a gap for this Stuart said I'm thinking of doing this will we do it together uh, last year was the first year this year was the second year so both years we filled Goffs with just under 900 people both right. years right. and the, the the sense of curiosity amongst the audience and um, you know probably the, 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 their hunger to learn from, from the SME heroes and like we've had 14, we won't name them here, uh, 14 absolute heroes on the stage telling their story and you know from last year David Bobbitt who's taken his business from, from a modest business on the Nace Road to supplying pretty much every kitchen for McDonald's globally you've done a Kelly who had a um, whopper of an exit that won't be matched probably this year for, for one entrepreneur Breeze O'Donoghue who's done what she's done in, in, in Primark from scratch yeah. effectively and uh, and people so we, we had we've such a deep database we communicate to every week so we um, we we got we worked on that database, partnered with Fitzgerald Power and Bank of Ireland and Sunday Times, and we filled the room with uh, curious entrepreneurs. And um, I, I just said that it's you know I think what makes a great entrepreneur and is someone that is curious, mm-hmm. and and you know the necessity is the mother of all invention, mm-hmm. but it's that curious DNA strand that you might have that makes makes you realise that what you're doing is right when everyone else wants to jump out the door yeah. you kind of go one more I need I have the strength yeah. to carry on to keep going on that it's and I a think restlessness that's it as well it's curious and restlessness you don't stop you know 
Yeah, I think there's a phenomenon that there's se- there's you know a selection of elements that have to have kick in. You know, it's mm-hmm. speed, the right people. You know, spot on with the message that you have with the clients, knowing exactly the psychometrics of the clients are as well. And it's all this soup that that mix together. And when they all all the stars line up, mm-hmm. that's when you suddenly wealth wealth just comes your way on it then as well. Yeah, is there a things. book? Is there a book in you, Mark? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, my so wife would say definitely the, not. There's a checkbook there. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, what what you we're, we're talking about Ireland and we're talking about what you're doing. Are you are you as a company looking for investors outside or companies outside as well? Yeah, we have a lot of investors outside. There's probably an expat team by virtue of network. If, um, okay. Which, but they, they've brought an awful lot of value to of our existing businesses. Um, Renix, we supply pretty much 80% of all car license plates UK and Ireland. We've now won two contracts for two US states, soon to be announced. So we have a market entry into the US with that business. Um, Bougium, we've probably, we saw five Mexican restaurants the day we bought the business with David Maxwell, we thought we could be to Ireland what Chipotle was to the US. We are. We've 18 stores, soon to be 20. And we're looking at a UK market entry for that business. It's a difficult industry. Like a friend of mine owns Night Catering. Mm. Um, and they have a restaurant up in Salorgan and they do the catering all around. It's like it's... God, I... I people have this romantic idea about the restaurant. Yeah. I, it's not for me. No. Definitely, no. definitely not. I like my nine to fives. <laughs> no, it's not. But in Bougie, I suppose we saw a great management team. We saw a great brand, and we saw a great product that had had um, had runway to scale. Okay, so where if someone wants to sort of reach out to you, or they want to take, um, they want to find out about your your newsletter or whatever, where where can they get that? Or uh, Renatus dot i e r e n a t u s dot i e. So that's uh, that's us. There's a there's a there's a place to register for the newsletter, and our story is there. But our kettle is always on in Main Street if anyone wants to come in for a tea or coffee. The the, 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 the question as well is: Do you open up for let's as, if if it's called applications? Is it once a quarter, or if if someone has a great idea, do you know do they kind of knock on your door and say, "Look, just always on. We take, we'll take yeah. Christmas Day off." Other than okay. that, okay. Uh, so our mobiles are on the our mobiles are on the website. Our emails are on the website. We're always on. We're always on on it. We'll, not, we'll have to test that Christmas Day one. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said his kettle is on. I'm going to follow him in yeah. now and have a coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Have, a, have a coffee yeah, on yeah. It there. That's, That's great. great. Look, it's great having you on. It's um, I think it's it's great to see uh, companies like yourselves, investors like yourselves, and watchers are doing, especially in in Southern Ireland, because it gives hope to what's happening out there at the moment. You know, and I think Ireland is full of entrepreneurs. I, you know, we we get very creative. I, the experience that we have from traveling around the world and and bringing it back is so. It's it's like I, I know some coaches around the world, and they said per head of population they think Ireland is one of the, the, the biggest for entrepreneurs mindset that they have come across in the world so I think it's it's great that you are tapping into that as well Thanks Joe, thanks Simon Thanks very much. On that note folks we are going to uh, take a quick break and we will be back uh, in a few minutes. You're listening to Joe Dalton on Dublin South FM Community Radio with a global audience Broadcasting to South Dublin on 93.9. This is Dublin South FM. We have a very different and equally uh, powerful magnanimous guest on on the second half of the programme. Welcome, Francis Valour. It's great to have you here. And uh, um, I understand you're a consultant, clinical psychologist, author, international speaker. And for you, the whole aspect of living a centered, mindful life is critical. Well, welcome, to, welcome to the studio, Francis. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. Yes, it, it's, um, I came, myself and Francis had a coffee there a couple of weeks ago. And uh, Francis was, we were speaking about some of the information um, about, we could say, I don't like to use the word mindfulness because it's battered around like an old boot. Um, I like to use the word consciousness. And it's basically, and I'm sure Francis will elaborate on that and what he believes it is. So, Francis, what is it? 
I call it actually awareness. Awareness, mm. yes, yeah. yes, yeah. And, uh, because mindfulness for me is a stripped down version of the real thing. When the Buddha started that, his purpose for doing this was a complete transformation of human beings from the way we live in pain and suffering and so on, move from there to a state of freedom, joy. How does this happen? Through compassion. If you become a person f of compassion, then inevitably your your life begins to change. The way you look at everything changes. Your, li your experiences change because in the mind you have all the problems that you experience in your life, in the way you live your life and the way you relate to people, the, the way you treat the world, the, the environment, all this is th because of a mind-based life. Our business is all mind-based. Even psychology, unfortunately, is by and large has been psychiatry, medical professions, all mind-based. And we have the consequences, the cycle of suffering, non-stop, and someone like Buddha came along and said, look, we can stop this if you want. But you have to decide. Come out of your mind. Go to your heart. That is where it is. You'll find it there. It, it's interesting because, yes, we all live in our minds. And, it, you know, it, it, the mind controls everything we do, which then is our, our education. As you say, it, it, you know, all the different professions are out there. Like the, the the biggest question that I ask myself is, how did it end up being this way? Like you know, it was thousands of years ago. But and are we now starting to try? Is there a movement that we are starting to try to connect back with this, or has that movement always been there? We're just part of it now. It has always been there. Every now and then someone will come along and try to wake us up. A great man, a poet, summed up the, the whole entire message of Jesus, for example, he would say, he, according to him, is wake up. Just two words. And that is exactly what the Buddha was saying. If you wake up, you will necessarily wake up your heart. What was Jesus talking about? Love. What is Buddha talking about? Love, compassion. I, I think it's all about love and compassion. Like it's one of the things. And if we talk about, and I, I'm practicing this at home with my children. And what I'm doing is instead of if they're, if they're you know, speaking to me about something, I'm kind of not answering them from my head. I'm actually focusing on my heart. And I've learned that through love matters. Yeah. Um, a heart matters. And I focus on my heart and then I answer them. And I'm answering them in a softer, gentler way. Yeah. Which is beautiful. Mm. And then I shout at them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've been in a spiritual program for 14 years and... The, the essence of that program is exactly what you're talking about, it is, is, is coming out of your own head and, and yeah. thinking and doing things for others, even if it's painful, even if initially you're acting the part. If you act it, eventually you'll do it, you know. So, and, and that's, you know, there, that's the essence of all these 12-step programs, recovery programs, is taking yourself out of... But why, did he, why, why have human beings been so addicted to relying on the mind so much when it's obvious that it's not just about the mind. Yeah, you know, it is not about the mind, but it, because its mind is our determining factor. How do we look at life and how do we look at our relationship? The incredible thing about this is things that keep repeating, and we know it's coming from our minds, the belief system, the experiences get stored in our lives as concepts and beliefs. And they form, they determine our the direction of life, the behaviors, and uh, relationships. All decided by our this belief system, mind, mind. Whereas, when we relate to life, to any experience, we look at it from our hearts. It's a very different experience. Mm. This whole thing changes. It's not a huge. Uh, 
it's a huge life changing program it is not like it's going to take ages to come to this this happens it, it, it does but there's, there's two there's two elements to this there's our minds but then there is our bodies and sometimes our habits are not from our mind our habits is from our memory muscle yeah yeah so you know you'll you'll do something and your body will go oh i remember this and this is how i react yeah. and it's not the by the mind and it's focusing on our thoughts and our thoughts are feelings but sometimes our thoughts can be tend to be feelings which can screw us up however you know the the body is bearing the brunt of the mind and the what the mind is doing one of the things we notice in with all our our hypnosis and our our suggestions and so on and our psychosomatic disorders and all this how much the body it ends up being subservient to the to the mind and ends up doing its bidding and see what is, what happens to us whereas if it's the other way if this conditioning that is mind based conditioning stops hearts are alive and active health improves actually for mm. people and so the body is actually being lost because of the mind's activity not the, not body doesn't have an independent i if the body is allowed to follow its wisdom we are in good shape it is the mind that interferes with that if we listen to the, our bodies the body will say one thing the mind will contradict it the mind says something but the body will say hmm not really but it it it's okay so if you're looking at the body and the mind right and then you were were talking about where how does that affect of the future like is the mind just projecting us into the future of what might or could happen to protect us or should we just you know we talk about living in the now or should we just look at what is actually happening now and not worry about that because it doesn't exist the body is only capable of being in the now that is why this meditation practices and so on are t- t- talking to us about be in the bo- moment how can you be in the moment by being in your body mind is what takes you away to the past and future mm. that doesn't exist really in the body if you are in your body you are in the moment see that is mm. what happens to us and then the, the attitude towards our own bodies changes if it is from the heart so is this why you know the, you know addiction programs and recovery programs never just fo- focus on the mind they focus on the mind the body and the soul they call yeah. the soul you know? yeah. and uh, my personal view is that you you can't just do this by addressing the mind you need to no. look at all three you know and things like alcoholism really are about the whole and the soul you yeah. know the alcohol or the the food or whatever is 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 the symptom you know but yeah. it's the whole and the soul is that what you think yeah it is actually the um, partly partly it is true mm. and uh, that's a whole complex issue mm. i would say for for yeah, a, one minute or two <laughs> to say however i would say something ab- also about this we can change this the more we listen to our hearts and our bodies we are safer and we connect with our souls through our hearts mm. this is why some there is something earlier to go back to earlier what joe said i believe there is a quickening of this what is happening human consciousness is changing in a way it has never happened before Mm-hmm. so we are really discovering our life in a different way now one of the things some i have a program that i do the compassionate workplace for businesses mm-hmm. and um, yesterday i gave a talk to a group of uh, uh, business people some years ago if somebody came up with this and said this to a group of business people about compassionate workplace mm-hmm. i think they would laugh at this whole idea Yeah no the yeah the nowadays with the cigarette and the point yeah, yeah. N- nowadays the people are interested in it because there is a realization dawning upon people business people hard nosed people accountants executives ceos or they're taking interest in this and is that because people have realized they've gone as far as they can with the old way of thinking and that that pra- pragmatically if we don't take this softer approach it's all going to collapse it's also it, it, one if you have 
if you bring compassion to the working place, how will it show through kindness, through love for people, through supporting people? And what happens is the atmosphere changes, productivity improves. You take care of the, your employees, for example, or your, your team. They give you the best. I have numerous examples of this and now it is research based last few years they have done a lot of research in america and the absenteeism goes down and overall it's good for business bottom line goes up but here it is because the old way is you know the, the, the fittest survive dog eat dog you know it, it's all done and it, that whole mindset is changing and it's all sort of you were right People now are starting to ask questions and it's asking questions because what's going on in the environment? What are we doing with plastic? What's happening to the, or the air we breathe, the forests, the, the oceans? All these are, are happening in such a way for people to sort of ask these questions and a question creates another question which is an answer creates and I think that's how it's evolving. In saying that, we're, we're getting close to the time. Francis, you, you're running an event very soon. Where is that and what is, ah, what yeah. is it about? I have an event, a two-day mindful, uh, it, I would call it mindfulness retreat, but um, it is really awareness. It is, the title of the thing is, of the two days is Living a Heart-Centered Life. This is not only for businesses, it's also for people, anybody who is interested in it. And a very interesting mix of people come for this. What I would like people to experience during that time is what we are talking about exactly. Come down from your heads. It is very tiresome. It causes mm. a lot of pain there. Yeah. There is a far better place for you to go and live from there. Yeah, Thomas, yeah. Your life is going to be different. You will be happier, yep. peaceful. Enjoy your life. Have better relationships if you can begin to do this. Where where can people, if they want to check out, where, give us a, a, the web address if they want to check out. Say, my and look my own website it. is the best place to go to. www.francisvalour, F-R-A-N-C-I-S-F-A-L-L-O-R.com. And there... Details will be, will be available, and it's in Selbridge, 23rd, 24th, Saturday, Sunday of we November. We have that up on the website as well. So we have your, we'll have your details up on the site so people can track it down as well. On yes, a, on thank it. you very much for doing that. Yeah, Simon? I, I find this, this, this subject is very close to my heart. I've, I'm going through my own journey, very positive journey, and it's wonderful to have you here. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Simon. Thank, thank you, Francis. Thank, thank you. you. So, folks, Simon, what's the plan for you next week? You've got 30 seconds. Uh, more business plans, a uh, new website hopefully coming out next week, and uh, the same fun. Same fun. And, yes, I'm running a mastermind myself. Uh, you can catch that on uh, jdc.ie, and that's a mastermind for entrepreneurs. It's uh, a peer group. If you want to come, uh, you'll catch it at jdc.ie. Until next week, folks, on Business Eye, we've had another super week with my co-host, Simon Haig, and we will catch you here again. Until then, have a super weekend.